morning. morning. Welcome to St. Henry Church. Um, we'd like to invite you at this time to go ahead and take a moment and greet those that are seated around you. This is also a good time to check to make sure your cell phones are silenced so they don't interrupt today's Mass. Thank you for checking that. Today we celebrate the 23rd Sunday in Ordinary Time. The readings are at 996 in your green hymnals. Our celebrant for Mass is our pastor, Father Mark Beckman, and he'll be assisted by Deacon Marty DeShane. Please rise and join in singing our gathering hymn, 646, Be Thou My Vision, 646. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We gather today to celebrate the mystery of the Lord's death and resurrection. As we do so, let us acknowledge our sins that we may worthily celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. You are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. You are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. O God, by whom we are redeemed and receive adoption, look graciously upon your beloved sons and daughters, that those who believe in Christ may receive true freedom and an everlasting inheritance. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. Who can know God's counsel, or who can conceive what the Lord intends? For the deliberations of mortals are timid, and unsure are our plans. For the corruptible body burdens the soul, and the earthen shelter weighs down the mind that has many concerns. And scarce do we guess the things on earth, and what is within our grasp we find with difficulty. For when things are in heaven, who can search them out? Or whoever knew your counsel, except you had given wisdom and sent your body spirit from on high? And thus were the paths of those on earth made straight. The word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm can be found at 696 in your green hymnals. to make you so 
of the time we have. Teach us to be patient even as we wait. Teach us to embrace our every joy and pain. To sleep peacefully and to rise. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to Philemon. I, Paul, an old man, and now also a prisoner for Christ Jesus, urge you on behalf of my child Onesimus, whose father I have become in my imprisonment. I am sending him, that is my own heart, back to you. I should have liked to retain him for myself so that he might serve me on your behalf in my imprisonment for the gospel. But I did not want to do anything without your consent so that the good you do might not be forced but voluntary. Perhaps this is why he was away from you for a while, that you might have him back forever, no longer as a slave, but more than a slave, a brother. Beloved especially to me, but even more so to you as a man and in the Lord. So if you regard me as a partner, welcome him as you would me, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord be with you. 
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Great crowds were traveling with Jesus, and he turned and addressed them. If anyone comes to me without hating his father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, and even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not carry his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Which of you wishing to construct a tower does not first sit down and calculate the cost to see if there is enough for its completion? Otherwise, after, after laying the foundation and finding himself unable to finish the work, the onlookers should laugh at him and say, this one began to build but did not have the resources to finish. Or what king marching in battle would not first sit down and decide whether with 10,000 troops he can successfully oppose another king advancing upon him with 20,000 troops? If, but if not, while he is still far away, he will send a delegation to ask for peace terms. In the same way, any one of you who does not renounce all his possessions cannot be my disciple. The Gospel of the Lord. The gospel today opens with a bit of a shocker, doesn't it? If you don't hate your parents, your wife and children, your brothers and sisters, even your very life, you cannot be my disciple. Stark words from Jesus today, uh, surrounded by crowds of people as he is on his journey to Jerusalem. And uh, a great puzzle for us, right? What do you mean by this, Lord? And uh, when I was in the seminary, uh, we were trained to look at scripture and study uh, the original setting uh, in the life of Jesus in which the gospel was proclaimed to look also at the early church setting. And as a homilist, my task is also to ask how does it apply to all of us today? So, thinking about Jesus for a moment, his own experience, if we look at the Gospels, trace a path where he understood that the Father was calling him to a pathway in life that would ultimately lead him to the cross, where he would be called to let go of everything and to give himself fully for all of us. And that long journey from his hometown of Nazareth to the cross at Jerusalem meant that Jesus himself experienced the separation from people he loved the most. So there's a powerful moment when he goes to his hometown of Nazareth and begins the proclamation of the gospel. And the gospels tell us that the people of the city, including people in his own household, could not accept what he was saying. So that moment where Jesus had to choose. Am I going to do what the hometown folks want me to do, or am I going to father, follow the will of my Father? Profound moment. Second moment. This time not his hometown family, but his own chosen disciples, the closest of them. When Jesus first tells them, I'm going to Jerusalem, I'm going to die there, Simon Peter says to him, God forbid that any such thing should ever happen to you. So again, Jesus has to let go 
of the expectation of the disciples to do the will of the Father. And even his own self in the Garden of Gethsemane, Father, if it's possible, let this cup pass. But if not, your will be done. His own life was one where he experienced a deep call to be the son whom the Father had called him to be. The life setting of Jesus himself. Then what about the early church community that proclaimed and handed on this gospel after Jesus' death and resurrection? Well, if you study early church history, we know what happened to almost every apostle, don't we? In choosing to follow Jesus, they did have to leave their families. They left behind many things in life, their possessions. And in the end, most of them also had to let go of themselves. And they too shed their blood for Christ. It's a pattern of what I like to call Christic love. Once drawn into the mystery of the heart of God, we have to let go of everything in life that holds us back from being God's beloved daughter or son and living fully the freedom that Christ has won for us, which is always expressed in self-giving love. It takes the shape of the cross, doesn't it? Of the body of the blood given for us, the body of the Lord given for us, and his blood poured out. That's why every time we gather around this Eucharistic table, we hear the words of Jesus again. This is my body for you, my blood poured out for you. This is me given for you. So that's the life setting of the early Christian community. So now what about us? What does it mean for us who hear the gospel on this Labor Day weekend, right? We want to just have a weekend of rest and relaxation, don't we? And now we're confronted with these words of Jesus. Well, for myself, I recognize that there are things in my life at times and sometimes persons that I'm trying to please that don't allow me to be the son that God created me to be. And when I become aware of that, I have to learn to let go of those things in order to walk the path that God has called me to. And sometimes that means also, and this is the harder part, I have to die to myself. Those self-centered desires that would keep me from love. Wow, that's not easy, is it? Our selfishness is the hardest thing to let go of. To say, this is not about me holding on, but letting go in love. So what is the cross I'm invited to carry today? <clears throat> well, when I get up in the morning, maybe it begins this way. Okay, God, this is the day you've given me to live today. This is how I am today. Help me to accept myself as I am this morning. These are the people around me, God. Help me to accept them as they are. And this is the life that's unfolding today. Help me to accept it, Lord. <clears throat> and once I can see that, I can say, okay, so what's the cross I carry today? Lord, help me today to love as freely and openly as I can love, just like your son did for me. So maybe that's part of the answer to the puzzle that's in the gospel today. So the rest of the story is for each of us to ponder, to figure out 
Lord, what are you asking of me? Is there someone or something in my life that I need to let go of so I can be freer to love? Lord, help me today to know what is my cross and give me the grace to carry it. With the Nicene Creed, let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In a spirit of trust, we bring to the Lord our prayers of intercession. For all church leaders and all who are called to lives of service in imitation of Christ, let us pray to the Lord. For our nation on this upcoming Labor Day, that all work may be directed to God's glory, we especially pray for the unemployed and those who suffer from, from food or housing insecurity. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who are in formation for the priesthood, that they will always be open to the guidance of the Holy Spirit on their journey of discipleship. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who are need, in need of forgiveness, that their hearts will be turned to repentance and acceptance of Christ's mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who are sick or suffering in any way, remembering especially those who are affected by disease, de deprivation, or natural disaster, that they will be supported and experience the healing love of God in their lives. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who have died, especially for our parishioner, Lori Anders Gould, let us pray to the Lord. For Jessica Gregory, for whom this Mass is being offered, let us pray to the Lord. For those intentions that we hold within our hearts, let us pray to the Lord. O God of all creation, Lord of life, hear the prayers of faith we bring in the name of your beloved Son, Jesus, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Please join in singing our hymn for preparation of the gifts, number 770, in this place. That's 770.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. The Lord has took the sacrifice at your hands. The praise and glory of his name. From our good and good of all his holy church. O God, who give us the gift of true prayer and of peace, graciously grant that through this offering we may do fitting homage to your divine majesty and by partaking of the sacred mystery, we may be faithfully united in mind and heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, for whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Henry, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and the salvation of all the world be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Mark, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned here before you, in your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all of your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory 
through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. 
Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. in our hymnals. Please join in singing Shepherd Me, O God. Next hymn is number 52, My Soul is Thirsting, number 52. for you. 
Let us pray. Grant that your faithful, O Lord, whom you nourish and endow with life through the food of your word and heavenly sacrament may so benefit from your beloved Son great gifts that we may merit an eternal share in his life who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. We have a few important events uh, this week uh, coming up. So this coming Tuesday evening, uh, we will begin a class on the mystery of the Eucharist, God with us. And that will take place in the fellowship hall uh, beginning at seven o'clock till 8.30 on selected Tuesday evenings. All are welcome. Also, this Thursday evening uh, is the great uh, kickoff for our um, strategic plan that we've been working on for the last year. And we have a variety of parishioners who are going to be speaking about different parts of that plan. So we will gather in the fellowship hall at 5.30 for food for those who would like to grab a bite to eat. And uh, the meeting itself will start at six o'clock. So hope you will be able to join us and be part of this most important evening. And next Sunday between the nine o'clock and 11 o'clock masses, we're kicking off the faith and justice ministry uh, on the principles of Catholic social teachings and Father Kibbe, our senior priest, will be speaking on the first of those principles, which is the life and dignity of the human person. So hopefully you'll be able to join us for that as well. Many opportunities upcoming in the life of our parish. So please grab a bulletin and uh, check out a lot of the future events that are coming up. I have to say last but not least, when Jesus spoke today about carrying our cross, uh, I could not help but think about, sometimes it's awkward to do that, but we even have a beautiful model because our server did a great job of carrying a very big, tall cross in this morning. So thank you for that. <laughs> the Lord be with you. With your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be to God. And thanksgiving, please join in singing 733, Lead Me Lord, 733.